Hello, in this video I'm going to be going over some of the cultural influences that the movie Alien uh, from 1979 has had on the video game industry and some of the critiques on our culture as a whole that it has. I think that the entire last half of the movie is ideal for a video game, and in fact I could see a large amount of the tropes in this movie used in modern games. Uh, as a disclaimer, I know that there have been a few alien games made in the past, but I have not looked into these in any detail before, so there could be things I'm saying that are in those games that I have just never seen because I haven't played them. I think in particular the hunting of the xenomorphs uh, throughout the mid to late of the game would be a compelling game mechanic. For example, you could play as either side to make it interesting or even have a competitive game where one player plays with the xenomorph and hunts down the rest of the crew while they attempt to stop it and have to do everything to like destroy the ship or just like try and capture you before everything goes bad. I do think that pretty much everything besides the hibernation sequence in the movie uh, could be included in a game, um, but on that note, I don't think everything that could be made into a game should or could be made into a single game. Uh, for example, I don't think the setup of the movie would be easily compatible with the latter half of the movie. Uh, this is because the same people that would be interested in the everyday running of a spaceship, like a simulator style game, probably wouldn't be too interested in the horror genre of game. Or even if they are, probably not at the exact same time. As for cultural impacts, this movie has had a huge amount of influence on games, particularly in the sci-fi genre. Some noticeable examples that uh, I recognized were the Callisto Protocol, Viscera Cleanup Detail, which is all about cleaning up after a uh, alien attack on a spaceship. Very obvious call-out. Uh, Pollen and the Half-Life series of games. Uh, some of the standout examples I noticed uh, were the still to this day frequent use of command line computers used on supposedly advanced space stations, uh, the use of airlocks to kill opponents, this is also seen in games like FTL, uh, the aesthetic design of spaceships in games, uh, which itself was influenced by movies like 2001, and uh, lastly, the heavy use of steam and burst pipes and mist in uh, the sci-fi genre, particularly on spaceships. For some reason, there's always a burst pipe, or about 20. Another really particular example is the face crabs within Half-Life, as well as the Metroids within the Metroid series, which are they're like parasitic aliens that specifically attach to the face, which is very reminiscent of the first encounter with the Xenomorphs in the movie, where they attach to, uh, I can't remember his name, but the guy's face... I think that this film, at its core, is a critique on unregulated capitalism. We see from some of the very first lines of dialogue being about wage bonuses and how the company is being stingy with paying its employees. Then, later on, it forces them to engage in dangerous work practices, overtime without any extra pay, because of the terms and conditions of the contract, going so far as to threaten their entire pay if they do not comply. And then, the final nail in the coffin is, at the end, or in near the end of the movie, it's revealed that the entire reason they grabbed the Xenomorph in the first place is because the company wishes to use it for its weapons division to make even more money. Uh, it goes so far as to label the crew as expendable, and everything besides making money, basically, is secondary. What this also has subtones of is that without intervention, this unregulated capitalism would have destroyed itself. As how would the company have possibly have controlled this creature without themselves being destroyed once it had gotten back? Or could have even destroyed the entire planet if the Xenomorphs had just been able to repopulate and take over everything since they're seemingly unstoppable. Uh, I think this movie is also an excellent insight into the general optimism that the world had for human spaceflight in the shadow of the Apollo era. Uh, so I looked up the date that this movie is supposed to have taken place in. It's 2122, which is only 98 years from now, which sounds like a long time, but if you look at it, we haven't gone to the moon in 50 years, and that's only double the time, and apparently they're at a planet 40 light years away, which would take at least 40 years to get to, so that doesn't give us much time to get there, and uh, we haven't even been to Mars yet, so I think that this shows like 
that back in the 70s we were really optimistic about where where we would be with space travel especially with humans doing the main of the exploring and not like robots and probes which is also interesting lastly this movie was a good experience to watch because i used to always be afraid of it as a kid because i remember in disney there was a ride where the xenomorph would pop at the ceiling and that was one of the most terrifying things but after watching it now as an adult for the first time it was actually really cool to see like a lot of the influences that this movie had on modern sci-fi as i've been getting more into that recently um and i noticed that the main actress is actually in the avatar series of movies which i also thought was pretty cool thank you bye